always always something can go wrong disorders that you're going to see with the white blood cells leukopenia that's a low white blood cell count anything below the norm of the 5,000 would be considered low meaning a person's ability to fight off any type of pathogen is decreased some of the causes maybe chemotherapies maybe radiation oh do we have to necessarily be sick and get in cancer treatment to be exposed to radiation no poisons infectious diseases definitely increases the risk of infection a lot of times in some of the diseases that people can have it's not necessarily the disease that kills them it's the opportunity opportunistic infections that kill them because you don't have the ability to fight them off leukocytosis is where the white blood cell count is high so anything above that norm which is the five to ten thousand anything above the ten thousand would be considered high now it can be high because we might have an infection and the body's not able to win the war and we need some help we might need that antibiotic they can actually increase in number when you're having allergic reactions diseases of course can affect the white blood cell counts this is when it might become important for the doctors to do the differential white blood cell count so they can identify the one that is out of order and then they can test for the the disorders that they know that white blood cell attacks leukemia one of the biggest right this is where there is a cancer of the hemopoietic tissue the actual production in the bone marrow this can produce a very high number of the white blood cells that are found in the blood there is myeloid leukemia myeloid gave rise to what our granulocytes the neutros the eos the vasos lymphoid the, the lymphocytes we can have acute and chronic leukemia. Acute, death is usually very quick. Um, the chronic usually takes a little bit longer time. Some, we definitely come a long way with treating leukemias. Um, it's a, it, it's very sad though to watch someone suffer from it um, I have quite a few people I know some of them are dead um, but you know children suffer it's, it's just terrible this is what it would look like and the difference between a normal blood smear and one that has leukemia do you guys remember looking at that under the scope okay and how those white blood cells were just all that purple was showing up okay for those white blood cells and when a hematologist begins to look at this under the scope that's clear indicator of leukemia what do you notice in this smear and this smear about the red blood cells they look like they're destroyed 
And that's pretty, I mean, you know, depending on the type of leukemia, that's what can happen. So it's a very debilitating, horrible disorder. When this um, complete uh, CBC uh, differential, when these types of orders for blood tests are given, when the doctor orders a complete blood count, that means they are looking for lots of information because the blood can actually supply information about this. I love it when my doctor orders one because I want to know, okay? I look at all of it. My doctor's really good. She understands. She, you know, she knows when I come in that it's not going to be an easy visit, you know, because when you got this much knowledge on a topic this big, and, you know, I don't go in there acting like I know everything, but I go in there and I'm like, well, you know, what about this and what about that? I've got this question, that question, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and she's just very patient. But the CBC, the complete blood count, it'll tell us the hematocrit. Do you guys remember the little centrifuge? Okay. And that telling us that normal red blood cell count, okay, like... If we're looking at that bottom part of the test tube, we know that there's a norm that should be there. It'll let us know the hemoglobin concentration. Ah, what if what well, what do we know about hemoglobin? Carries the oxygen. Do you happen to remember like what the norm? might be between males and females? 12 to 16 for females. Roughly that 14 to 18 for the males. Total count for red blood cells. Whoa, wait a minute. Reticulocytes. Do you happen to remember what that might have been? That's the immature red blood cell. They go into blood circulation to mature. So there should be a norm for that also, which is kind of cool. White blood cells, platelets, we can do a differential white blood cell count and we can get red blood cell size and hemoglobin concentration per red blood cell. What kind of information can that let you know? If you've got, if you've got enough oxygen going around in your body. So somebody who was anemic might have lower counts, which is kind of cool. The next part of the blood that we've got to talk about are the platelets. They're so cute. Okay? The platelets. Oh, I don't care about that. I should take a slide out. For the platelets. <coughs> Hemostasis. What's that? Huh? Controlling the bleeding. Okay? Hemostasis. If we begin to bleed, all right, we need to stop it. All right? Now, that's happening 24-7. As you all are just sitting here right now, thinking, seven more minutes, seven, and then when we come back, is she going to lecture or is she going to let us do a lecture? <laughs> okay? You know, as you're sitting here thinking that, stuff is breaking and stopping, breaking and stopping as you're sitting here. Those little vessels are breaking. 
Now, the job, make sure those little breaks get stopped. Platelets play a major role in that. To make sure that we control the bleeding, because we can't simply just have stuff bleeding out, all right? That would not be maintaining any type of homeostasis of the body. So there are mechanisms in place when a breach happens to help stop it. The mechanisms that work to stop the bleeding at that breach, a vascular spasm, a platelet plug formation, blood clotting, which is termed coagulation. Platelets need this. If bleeding starts and it cannot be stopped, what will happen? It will result in a positive feedback cycle. For the most part, positive feedback is bad. All right? In this case, with bleeding, it's going to end up creating a situation where the blood volume is going to continue to get decreased because you're bleeding, all right? But we have started this positive feedback cycle. We're gonna keep feeding the bleeding and then what'll happen, that decrease in the blood volume is gonna result in death because the heart is not able to keep up with the loss of blood that's occurring at that area. So it becomes important for the body to go through that mechanism to stop the bleeding. So our platelets, they're not a full cell, okay? They're not. They are simply a fragment. That's it. They come from, and this one I just think is really cool. It's called a megakaryocyte. What does that term mean? Mega. Karyo. Nucleus. A large nucleus cell. And I'm not kidding. The megakaryocyte, it's in the bone marrow, in the trabeculae. You guys remember the trabeculae of the bone, right? And the megakaryocyte, once it gets formed, simply sits in some of that trabeculae. Blood flows by it. And it's like it's got, you know, little pieces that just kind of hang in the way, all right, of the, out there in the blood. And as the blood comes by, it whacks it off, and that little piece of the cell that got whacked off is the platelet. Isn't that cool? Now, <laughs> they're very small. They have granules. They have a very complex structure to them. They have a canalicular system. Do you guys remember canalicula? Where? Do we hear that? In the bone. The canaliculi were how one lamella, or the cell in this lamella, got to talk to this cell in this lamella. Right? So, once again, amoeboid movement and phagocytosis. 
eating stuff up. The normal platelet count should be anywhere from about 130 to 400,000 in that blood count that the doctors do. Take a break. Be back at 9.30.